very good evening to you. Welcome to another News Mega Life broadcast right here on DBS Television. My name is Timothy Paulian. We'll be together until 10 o'clock this evening. We are also on Facebook. So those of you watching the broadcast on Facebook, uh, here's hoping that you have yourself a very um, interesting time watching the program and will find it edifying as well as you watching at home on television later we'll be providing you with an opportunity to call because of a special guest we are focusing on the hospital ship usns comfort over the last uh, few weeks we've been hearing a lot about the usns comfort and uh, some people have been uh, taking it uh, to task and saying that they uh, they have their suspicions uh, with regard to its uh, voyage to the Caribbean, as well as to a number of other destinations, the likes of Panama, Peru, St. Kitts. Um, Haiti has already traveled to Trinidad and Tobago, providing medical treatment to dozens of people in the Twin Island Republic. It will be in St. Lucia and between September the 23rd and October the 2nd. And some people are saying, look out, be very suspicious, primarily because the medical personnel will be using the uh, local people as subjects of experimentation. The Ministry of Health recently issued a press release and gave certain assurances saying that the medical personnel will be on the USNS Comfort, will be vetted. And my special guest this evening is in a position to answer several questions with regard to the presence of the um, USNS Comfort in St. Lucia, the services that will be provided and how that service can be accessed. Her name is Dr. Sharon Belmar george Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you. Good night. Why St. Lucia among the islands? Can we count ourselves lucky? How was St. Lucia selected um, for the visit by the USNS Comfort? Well, the primary purpose of the humanitarian mission is to provide medical support to its partner nations. And the visit that the USNS is doing, it's part of a strategy to strengthen the, the bond, the engagement with the U.S. and the region. And it's part of the health pillar of the U.S. Caribbean 2020 strategy. Now, this strategy does not only include health. It also includes security, education, energy, diplomacy, and also prosperity. This strategy is a result of the U.S. Caribbean Strategic Engagement Act, which was passed by legislation in the U.S. in 2016. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time they're coming in, in, this, in this magnitude to St. Lucia. But from 2007, they've already done um, seven missions in the region, seven successful missions in the region. Is it a case where the authorities from the U.S. Um, call on the local authorities, or do you th was it a case where we called on the U.S. authorities asking them for the visit? I am not exactly sure how, who started the engagement, okay. but it was at the level of our external affairs and the U.S. So it was at a level a lot higher than us technical officers within the ministry. But as far as we saw it, it was an opportunity for us and a lot of the other Caribbean um, islands in the region. So we saw it as an opportunity to, to strengthen some of the gaps that already exist within our public health care system here. Widely accepted by um, the health fraternity over in St. Lucia. But they are the skeptics. Can, can you blame those people who are skeptical? I mean, when you first heard the WhatsApp messages where people were warning um, St. Lucians to be on guard because they could be the subjects of experimentation and so on, mm -hmm. what, 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 what kind of reaction did this prompt among Ministry of Health officials? I think in terms of a lot of the conspiracy theories that are going around, when you look at the history of, of public health, in the 1930s to the 1970s, where there, was, there, there wasn't legislation to guide um, in terms of um, research, the legislation to guide, the ethical principles to guide. This did not exist way back then. So in the development of medicine, there were a lot of unethical studies that were done. So I can understand why when persons look back and they see some of what has happened, 
that there would be a level of skepticism whenever there's something that's free. But for us in the ministry, whenever we collaborate with any organization, we always ensure due diligence is done. When we did have this opportunity, as we do for a lot of the other organizations that we work with, and let me just indicate that this USNS mission is not the first time we're collaborating with the U.S. In our stocky hearing, which is going to be here again next year, these are U.S. persons who give free hearing aids, and we do it, you know, with the World Pediatric Project, where they do surgery for children. We have quite a few collaborations around the world that we, we do, but we ensure the necessary processes are in place to ensure a safe mission for the persons that they are seeing. So on, on hearing of this mission, as we normally do for our collaborations and our volunteers, because we do have a policy in place, we ensure that all of the health care workers are registered and licensed with their respective councils, that is the medical and dental council, the pharmacy council, the allied health council, the nursing council. So this is one of the first steps, that all the necessary documentation is sent in and approved by the, by the council. And medication, for example, coming in, we also have a policy on accepting donations or even drugs coming into the country. So whatever medication that, that comes in would also be um, subject to this. So the list of drugs that they're bringing in also had to go through our drug inspector and through our chief, through the normal processes of review. So we have ensured that all of the necessary processes to ensure um, safety of the collaboration um, is being done. But in Saint Lucia, when we're talking about, when we talk about due diligence, um, people do not take this seriously because there have been several examples where, for example, persons were caught practicing in Saint Lucia without the requisite um, qualifications and documentation and so on. Um, Take, for example, there was um, a situation somewhere in 2012 um, where somebody was found to be practicing in Sinusha without the necessary qual qual qualifications. And I think there was a similar incident as well in 2011. So therefore, can the authorities really provide any kind of guarantees? I think so. Um, and St. Lucia boasts within the region as having one of the most stringent in terms of councils for regulating health care providers. And it okay. was a Because I just assembled upon in July of 2012, one man was charged as a Guyanese national for practicing medicine without a license. In 2011, one woman spoke about a botched eye surgery. It was discovered a man posing as a doctor did not have the requisite license to practice it. I'm yes. sure you heard about this. No, I'm not aware. This would be somebody who's not licensed and didn't go mm -hmm. through. So it would have had to be something that's hidden. Right. But in terms of us for collaborating organizations, we ensure they go through. And the councils are very diligent in terms of doing the necessary background checks on the healthcare workers. So I think it would have had to be a lot longer than that in terms of the medical councils. Um, how diligent is the council in, in terms of its effectiveness, in terms of um, its operations? Is it very active? Very active. And even for the local health practitioners, every two years, we have to renew. And a review is done again to ensure in terms of malpractice, in terms of clinical practice, in terms of... So you are reviewed um, regularly and you have to keep... You have to keep um, doing the, the necessary studies. You have to, you, yeah, you so have to. But why do we seldom have anybody being um, taken in, questioned, and so on um, with regard to misdiagnosis or malpractice? There because is, we hear people complaining yes. all the time. There is due process. I guess it's not being made public, mm -hmm. but it is happening. What is exactly is happening? People are called in, people are made to account. Yes, people, people are, are yes. found to be misdiagnosed. Yes, and so on. yes. This, is, this happens, I guess, it's not made public. So, why is it not made, being made public? And there are persons whose license may not be, mm -hmm. it may not be renewed or it may be suspended. So, those persons are not allowed to continue practicing. Okay. Why not make it a public issue? Why not disclose whatever action has been taken against those people for the benefit of members of the public? 
What we request for members of the public in terms of when you visit a, a healthcare provider, you have to ensure, and all, for example, physicians, they have to make visible a copy of the current license within the practice. So patients need, if you're going to your physician, you need to ensure that you could see a copy of their current practice upon the wall. So there may be, I, I can't say that in every single community, it could happen in a community where somebody decides to practice without being current. So unless it's brought to the attention of the, the ministry or the council, then we would not know about it. No, but the point, but, the point I make is that when people are disciplined, Yes. Why isn't this revealed to members of the public? I'm not sure why it's not revealed or made public. It must be within the legislation of the council in terms of how the process is done. But don't you think that um, the people should know, the people have a right to know, so that if those people continue to practice, then we are aware that um, they are flouting this regulation or the disciplinary action that has been taken against them? I think in terms of protecting the public, they may have a right to know if there are issues if a particular physician... Because, you see, as, as, I mean, as a talk show host, we had all the time, people are calling and complaining. That, I mean, it might not be something that they can prove scientifically in terms yes. of the, um, the evidence and so on, but they tell you that they know that they were misdiagnosed, they know that there was some kind of malpractice on the part of a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. um, they cannot prove it, but then if action is taken there should be some kind of disclosure as far as um, the necessary steps that were, that were taken or the sanctions that were imposed. But we do not hear that at all, at all, at all. Do you think that's causing um, people not to trust the system? And that's it why people be. are talking about things, the conspiracy theories, uh, conspiracy theories are coming on as well? It could be a part of, of the problem, maybe the non-disclosure, but mm -hmm. um, the council has to go by the legislation, and I'm not sure what exists in that case, but they would have to go and, and do what, what is necessary. In terms of the um, hospital ship, the USNS Comfort, what kind of calls are you getting from members of the public? Are people calling in in light of um, the claims that are being made in allegations? Are people asking questions of Ministry of Health officials in Sinusha to explain, to clarify. Yeah, we have been getting a lot of calls. Um, basically, people want a lot more information as to how to access the services and what services are available. So we have been providing updates as to the dates of the, the clinic. The ship is coming on the 23rd, mm -hmm. but the services will be available from the 25th to the 30th, from 8 to 4. Um, our walk-in clinics will be at the OKEU Hospital and at the National Cultural Center. That's the two sites that we'll be having eight to four walk-in clinics. Um, all of the surgical procedures and the diagnostic testing will be done on the ship. So we've been getting a lot of calls about persons wanting to access care and how do you access care and how do you get to do, um, especially the minor surgical procedures as well. What kind of recourse people have if there is any case of misdiagnosis or malpractice? Well, because the ship is collaborating with the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Health would, in terms of as well, continuity of care. One of the concerns that we, we had and we did discuss with the team during one of the early uh, meetings is to ensure that there is a clear referral process for persons coming in to be seen and, and registration on the data. What was done and what was recommended and for the surgical procedures they will be referred accordingly to with our teams who will be working alongside them so so how are, how are the how are preparations going right now in the lead up to the arrival of the ship the preparations have been going quite well we have a team of a surgical team surgical physicians and nurses will be working with the team on the ship um, our primary care teams will also be, and hospital teams, will be working at the clinical site. So we'll be having our district medical officers, our nurses, our nutritionists, our dentists, our health educators will all be on the ground at the clinics working alongside the U.S. team. Um, this would serve, because it's a collaboration, it would also be a learning experience for them working with and it would also help to curb the language barrier because we know persons may come in and they may only speak Patwa, for example. So we need to ensure that the necessary translation is made so that the communication is clear.
everything. So our team will be working with them um, and also everybody will get the necessary referral to ensure continuity of care after the visit. Now the arrival of the U.S. Um, NS Council coincides with the local health sector being in the spotlight and due to many shutdowns. Is the uh, mission being used to quell basically uh, the discontent among members of the physician sector with regard to the quality of health care, the availability of health care, things like that? Because some people tell you they find it very strange that amidst mm -hmm. all that um, the concern that is being uh, expressed with regard to the state of the health care, all of a sudden mm -hmm. we have this ship coming in to provide services. Well, the planning and the dating of the ship coming is not... Um, left to the St. Lucian authorities. It's a six-month mission that they're doing from June 15th to November 15th. And if you look at the route, it's, it goes along the island stream. They're going from one island to the other. So the date and the time of them coming is not St. Lucia asking them to come now because mm -hmm. there are issues. So this, this really is not us deciding when they come. It's them deciding the deployment of their mission. But I think we need to see it as an opportunity because um, our public health care system, there are certain services that we don't provide and we don't provide fully. For example, one of them is um, optometry, where we don't do eyeglasses for patients. And this is one of the services. So I see it as complementing some of the gaps that exist. But unfortunately, the ship is only going to be here providing services for six days. So it's just a small a small support within that week. But I think because of the numbers, um, if persons do um, decide to take advantage, it can, it can help in the short term. So I think we need to see it as an opportunity to, to bridge some of the gaps that we already have within our public care system and take advantage of it. What will be the operating hours? From 8 to 4. From 8 to 4. And they may go up to 5 if there's extra patients waiting to be seen. But the plan is from 8 to 4, from the 25th of September to the 30th of September. We know what impact it will have on the people who are seeking the services. What impact it will have generally on the local health sector in terms of giving it some kind of reprieve, some kind of breathing space? Yes, because we know that there's a waiting list at Victoria because of the shortage of beds. When there aren't enough beds to take, um, for example, our internal medicine patients, then we have to suspend surgery because you can't do surgery if you don't have a bed to put the patient on after surgery. So if we have a lot of admissions during the night, many times we have to postpone the surgery. And patients have been complaining of having to come back for another date for surgery. So I think it can also take care of a lot of the, the minor surgical procedures that are pending. Um, it's an opportunity to get those done, so to reduce that weight, especially since we are in that transition um, period in healthcare. But how do you capitalize on this in terms of the health sector um, to the extent that um, after the ship has left, so that you continue to provide services to the people and do not cause there to be any kind of backlog? Because it would have addressed the backlog. Yes, it? it would mm -hmm. have addressed. If used efficiently, it should address the, the backlog. It's just a matter of managing, managing the beds at the hospital to ensure we don't end up with such a backlog again. And, and hopefully we, 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 we get some good news soon in terms of the hospital Is the situation. arrival of the ship here, is it a godsend? <laughs> I see How do it, you see it? I see it as an opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. I see it as an opportunity for us. And I'm hoping the public also um, sees it as an opportunity for, for whatever services that they need, those who need health care. I'm really hoping that they see it as an opportunity. But um, as you were saying, some persons are skeptical. It's voluntary. We're not forcing anybody to, to take advantage of this. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. But we are hoping, especially persons who need the care and can't afford it, we are really hoping that they take, they take the opportunity. And our teams will be working alongside the U.S. team so they won't feel that they're with strangers or, you know, that there's an opportunity for anything different to happen. Will priority be given to any particular um, health condition? Um, not particularly. Um, there's a wide range of specialists that will be um, coming down. I can go through yeah. some of it. In terms of the general services at the two medical sites, we have internal medicine, pediatrics, general medicine, 
dental services, including cleaning and dental surgeries, optometry, including the provision of, of eyeglasses, physical therapy, women's health, dermatology, and pharmacy, because medication will also be given for those who, who need it. And from what the U.S. team had been saying, they could see about 500 persons per site per day. So it's, it's quite a bit their, their capacity. Now, on the ship, the ship, they're giving us... Um, Even at least 2,500, 3,000 at least, was there while they're here. While they're here, yes, hopefully, because it's six days. Okay, right. Yes. Um, on the ship, on the ship, they, they'll be providing the surgical and diagnostic care. So on the ship, the ship hospital will be providing CT scans, ultrasounds, x-rays, echocardiogram, laparoscopy, um, chemistry and hematology. That's blood, stool, urine testing on the ship. Um, for surgical procedures, they'll be doing ophthalmology, general surgery, both for adults and children, urology, orthopedic surgery, oral and maxillofacial surgery as well, plastic surgery, and wound care. And there's a very, very long list which I won't go through, but just to give you an idea of the the, the main areas of surgery that they'll be that they'll be doing on this. Show. I think for the benefit of the public, can we go through the list? The entire list yeah. of surgical press yeah. I can. <laughs> um, cataract lens replacement, pterygium excision, cholecystectomy, hernia repair, lipoma, soft tissue mass excision, circumcision, hydrocell, laparoscopy, fracture malunion repair, trigger finger release, carpal tunnel release, cleft lip repair, cleft palace correction, scar revision, skin grafting, chronic ulceration, and wound debridement as well. And these, they're not limited to those because other minor procedures that we need done, they said they'll also entertain. And a lot of those services are not available in St. Lucia. Some of them are available in St. Lucia, but there's a bit of a wait because of the bed situation at Victoria Hospital. But are there conditions, are there areas, for example, where persons would have required overseas treatment that and that service will be provided to them? Yes, I don't know if we do cataract lens shift. replacement here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are some that would require um, overseas treatment for sure. And in terms of diagnostics, in terms of the, the, the cost, um, imagine first, we, we have a list, a long list of persons requiring CT scans who could not afford to get one done privately. So all the of CT those... scan is about what, $1,800? Yes, $1,500 yeah, to $1,800. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So persons will be getting um, those done free of cost with the, NIS, with the full um, report to take to their, to their physician um, after it's done. Long term... Can, can we engage um, uh, ships of that nature, um, those hospital ships, to make more frequent visits to St. Asia? Is that at all possible? Yes, I think with the ship, there's an opportunity for networking because to the public, we're only discussing the services that are available. But in terms of the networking and collaboration with our public health primary care team, a lot of that will be happening. For example, they'll be working with our environmental health department. They also have entomologist, vector control officer. So they will be providing a level of support and they'll also be doing training. They have specialist nutritionists um, on the ship who would also be working with our teams. Health educators would also be providing training. So the, the services to the public will be one-off, but in terms of the longer-term training to our teams here, it's going to be something that will be maintained even after the ship leaves. And the ship we're making reference to, it was originally laid down in May of 1976 as Rose City. It was an oil tanker and in service with the U.S. Navy from December of 1987. Has 63 civilians on board, 956 Naval Hospital staff, some 258 Naval support staff and up to 1,000 beds. In accordance with the Geneva Conventions, Comfort and her crew do not carry any offensive weapons. Firing upon Comfort would be considered a war crime as the ship only carries weapons for self-defense. And the USNS Comfort is more advanced than a field hospital, but less capable than a traditional hospital 
on land. Once again, my guest this evening is the Medical Office of Health in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sharon Belmar George. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation and also we'll be explaining why the ship will be docked at Port Castries and why it will not be docked in the southern part of the island. We'll be hearing from the PS in the Ministry of Health and Wellness via uh, Alex Boski report. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. With 12 fully equipped operating rooms, a medical lab, a CAT scan machine, as well as 1,000 beds, the USNS Mercy is the largest floating hospital in the world. We can perform general surgery, orthopedic type surgeries, uh, we can abdominal surgery, urologic, gynecologic, obstetric, pediatric, oculo, um, we do, can do pretty much everything here except for neuro. That's about the only thing we don't have. We don't have uh, neurosurgeons. The ship is also equipped to carry out robotic surgery and even has its own blood bank. And you said if the blood bank ever runs dry, the crew uh, yeah, contribute so as well? Crew. So if somebody needs a lot of blood, we don't have time to process it, we can get the blood bank. At full operating status, the hospital ship can carry up to 1,215 medical personnel. So we train with those massive casualty scenarios as well as medical responses. Um, in the morning, we educate our corpsmen and other departments on different CASREC chem capabilities and treatments and educational things. The hospital ship's primary purpose is to provide on-site emergency care for U.S. forces in combat operations, but it recently visited Malaysia as part of its Pacific Partnership mission. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. You're watching Newsmaker Live with me, Timothy Polio. And my guest is Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health. We're here to focus on the hospital ship USNS Comfort visiting St. Lucia from the 23rd of this month until the 2nd of next month. Now, the ship will be docked at Port Castries. Explanation? Let's find out in this report from DBS's Alex Buske. This report was filed this evening during the DBS News World. The United States naval ship USNS Comfort is due in St. Lucia from September 23rd to October 2nd, 2019. The ship will be berthed at Port Castries and two walk-in clinics will be set up at the OKEU hospital and one other site to provide general clinical services. Health officials say there are various reasons for the ship being berthed at Port Castries only not moving to the south. And the question is often asked, you know, why is the ship not being buffed in the south so the people in the south could take advantage? Because notwithstanding 500 persons maybe per day at a clinic, some people in the south may still come, you know, because it has happened in the past where if you're not too early, you might not be one of those 500, you have to go and then come back again. But I think the difficulty we have is that the ship is here for about six days and it actually takes a day for the ship to set up itself, you know, at the clinics, you know, and, and to, to be ready for accepting patients and also at the end, you know, for, for shutting down and, and packing your equipment and getting ready to, to dispatch. So again, that is maybe two days out of six days. You only have four days left to actually deal. So if the ship has to, to, to go and rebirth in Viewfort, then we could see the logistics, the difficulty in the ship presenting itself in view for setting up again at the clinics and then to see the patients. One of the main conditions, Mr. St. Hill explains, is that the clinics should not be no further than 20 kilometers from where the ship is berthed. 
So that is one of the limitations we have. So we ask in patients from around the island, try to present yourself as early as possible. We know it's a first come first serve basis, but the ship is here for a number of days. So as, in as much as you will probably need the assistance, try to avail yourself of the opportunity to get treated by the experts on the ship. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is coordinating the voluntary medical mission of the USNS Comfort. All services are provided free of charge and are available for all who would need care. There is no pre-registration or appointment necessary for the clinics. Persons can simply walk in and request medical care. For- Thank you very much. Alex Bousquet for this report we just filed this evening during the DBS News World. The people in the south of Sinus have every reason to say everything that's, uh, that's uh, of note, everything that's significant happens only in Castries. Mm-hmm. And again, to give you an opportunity again to say, um, to explain why the ship cannot take its services directly to the people in the south. In our initial discussions, when the ship indicated that they would set up two clinics, the first recommendation was one clinic in the north and one clinic in the south, as we usually do to ensure access to care for both the north and the south. But in those discussions, they made it clear to us, similar to what the PS was saying, they come on the 23rd, it will take them two days to to set up. So services will be available from the 25th to the 30th and then another two days to pack up. And what they indicated as per their protocol, the clinic should not be more than 40 minutes away from the, from the, the ship hospital. Mm-hmm. So we were looking to see how we could stretch, how far down that we could get, and also get in an appropriate venue to facilitate the clinics was, was also a challenge. So they made it clear to us that trying to get a clinic in the south would be too far away from where the ship was birthed. So we, we really had no choice. We, our preference was to have one clinic in the north and one in the south to facilitate um, but It appears that people in the, in the north will have an advantage over people in the south and other parts of the island. Well, it will be easier to access, but we are hoping that persons get organized, especially for some of the communities, that the buses are mobilized and bring persons up to be able to access care. We are hoping that some of the groups come together to, to access the services within how, the two How can sides. this be um, organized properly? Um, will there be an input on the part of the Ministry of Health? If assistance is needed in terms of facilitating groups, we are open to, to that for, for groups that are far. But we don't have a set protocol in terms of persons in the south coming up. When particular um, at Port Castries will the, the ship birth? At any, Point Seraphine, yes, okay. at Point Seraphine. Okay. In terms of the logistics, in terms of how people will be able to access the services, you just yes. walk up to the ship? For the ship, remember the ship will be doing diagnostics and surgery only. So mm-hmm. those persons, we've already received quite a few referrals for surgical procedures and for diagnostic tests. We have their contact numbers. By the end of this week, we have to send all of this to the ship. So persons will be scheduled, will be given a set day and time to come in for your procedure on the ship. But for the walk-in clinics, during the six days, persons can come in just between 8 and 4, walk-in during that period. There is no, you won't be given a schedule, there's no registration needed, you just come in. But for the surgeries and for the diagnostics, those will be given a specific date and time to come in. How is this service expected to affect the pockets of private doctors in St. Lucia? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this may be of, of concern, but it's only for six days. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only for six days, and then it will be business as usual, literally. So, okay. yeah. The fact that people are, are so um, interested in the, in the services being provided by the hospital ship what does that say in general about the island's health sector? Isn't it shameful that, I mean, we're really looking forward to the U.S. NS um, comfort and it's for this particular reason is because we are so deficient because we have not been able to adequately provide a quality service to our people, something that is basically a human right, mandatory health care. Yes, I, I don't think it's shameful. I don't think that's the right word, but I think it shows that there are certain gaps that we do know. Because like I indicated earlier, there are certain dental procedures that we we just don't have enough 
dental surgeons on the ground to be able to, to do, mm -hmm. to do for both children and for, for adults. So there's a waiting list. So we were aware that there are some gaps within the service for eye care. We are aware that there are some gaps. So I think it's gaps that we are aware of, issues that we already know, um, and an opportunity for free medical. Medical care is expensive. So an opportunity to get it from um, qualified specialists, I think persons will take advantage so of So far, what, what are you detecting um, based on the visit of uh, the USNS Comfort to some of the um, destinations? For example, what are you hearing in terms of feedback? There's visited Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, uh, the feedback has been very good. I saw some of the footage, I saw some of the crowds. Um, and so far through colleagues, the feedback has been quite positive from their past missions. So we're quite encouraged. Um, it's the first time that I'm involved in, in this or the ministry, as far as I know, this level of collaboration. But like I said before, collaborating with other agencies, including the U.S., is not new to us. It's something we do. We have a set protocol for those collaborations. But the scale at which it is being done now is it's a lot bigger than, than usual. Um, and I think part of the skepticism when people hear a boat, when people hear a ship, is probably fueling a little bit more, you know. But um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can, it can be as successful as in the other islands where they seem to embrace it a little bit more than here. Why do you think that's the case? I'm not um, sure. I'm not sure why, because from the other islands, what we're hearing, the... Conspiracy theory is not as much um, as in St. Lucia. I'm not so sure why we, we seem to have a bit more of it here. Have you been able to determine the source of the um, disinformation or misinformation that uh, is being spread? No, and we have not tried to. I think um, generally um, I can give a word of advice to the public. When it comes to medical education and health education, there's so much information out on the internet a lot of it is erroneous. We saw it with the deadly fruits and persons, mm -hmm. once you see an article and it's on the internet. I think a lot this, of one, persons... this one has not worked because people have the empirical <laughs> evidence. People grew up eating um, the five yes, fingers but... and the, um, the sugar apple. Yeah, but there's mm -hmm. a tendency for persons now with all of the contradictory information that's out. Persons don't verify the source. You just see a Dr. John Paul, and it's doctor, but doctor of what? People mm. don't do the research as to, is this an authority? And I mean, when I, I don't want to dwell on the conspiracy theories, but if somebody, just as when the ministry is giving information, we say who we are and we say what our authority is, nobody has identified themselves. It could be John Paul living at Grosley. So you need to look to see who's saying it, what is the authority, and do the necessary research. Don't just take it uh, at, at face value. It's important to have, the to, to have accurate information and be guided by that. How does the ministry plan to counter this? Because I'm sure um, that this would have started because the ship is coming to St. Lucia, but there are other incidents that have happened in the past that would cause people to come out with um, information that is not credible. Yes. And how do you counter it? I think what the ministry needs to do, and we need to do a lot more of that on a lot of levels, is to ensure accurate information and continuous education on health is provided to the public. So persons have a reliable resource um, for information. And I think it is something we need to do on a more timely basis, something we need to do more often. So when a lot of those things come out, it's, it's clear and it's, it's put in a manner that the, the general population can understand. So persons don't hear something and then take it on without getting the necessary clarity to the information. I think there's, there's a, a, as much as there's a lot of information on the internet, there's a lack of accurate information coming out to people on health matters. With regard to the visit of the ship, providing um, those services that are not available in St. Lucia, how do you look a patient in there and say that we understand your plight, yes, um, we have diagnosed you and you need this particular treatment, but we just cannot provide it to you. It's unavailable. How do you deal with that? How do you um, <laughs> make such a, a, an yeah, expression? As with you? all developing countries, um, there are very few islands in our situation that are able to provide 100% of health care to their population. That's why it's, impor it's important for us to have networks 
where patients be referred to other islands with centers of excellence for certain um, conditions. Ideally, there are certain core services that we need to and we should be providing to, to the population. And I'm hoping that once we pass through this transition period of healthcare, that we will be able to provide a better service to the public. What are the, what are the Cubans saying that the Americans are coming to provide that service? Or do you think that the Americans are, are, have embarked upon this particular journey because Cuba is doing so much in terms of providing um, health, its health services to the Caribbean and the rest of the world? We have not had any feedback um, from the Cubans, but the Cubans remain very close, uh, in a very close relationship with us as usual. Remember, this is a six-day visit. Mm -hmm. The Cubans have become a part of our, our health system from when you look at the number of trained physicians, specialists within our health system and the support that they continue to provide in terms of specialists at our health institutions. So um, the, this six-day visit by the U.S. in no way reduces the impact and the support that we appreciate and the relationship that we have with the Cuban health services. So I don't see this affecting the, the Cuban collaboration that we have presently. But any suspicion as to why the Americans will be providing that service to us for just about the first time as far as the USNS comfort is concerned? Um, like I said before, it's part of the strengthening mm -hmm. of the, the U.S. collaboration in the region. And I think um, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, Grenada, Trinidad, Jamaica, um, we were all fortunate to have gotten this opportunity. As to where it started, I'm not clear, but I think the end point is good. You're watching Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television. Let's take another break, and when we come back, we'll be taking your calls. Once again, my guest this evening is Dr. Sharon Bell Majorge, Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health. We're focusing on the hospital ship USNS Comfort scheduled to arrive in St. Lucia on the 23rd of this month, and at least, what, two days later, it will be opening its doors to provide services to members of the public. We'll be back in just a moment. educate our foremen and other departments on different CASREC kind of capabilities and treatments and educational things. So the hospital ship's primary purpose is to provide on-site emergency care for U.S. forces in combat operations, but it recently visited Malaysia as part of its Pacific Partnership mission. The 70,000-ton ship first came to this region to provide aid when the 2004 tsunami struck. The Pacific Partnership is the largest annual humanitarian assistance and disaster relief preparedness mission conducted in the Indo-Asia Pacific region. The staff on board for this mission includes more than 800 military and civilian personnel from countries such as the US, UK, Australia and Peru. During the five-day visit, the crew participated in readiness drills with Malaysian medical professionals as well as community outreach programs which served to boost relations between Malaysia and the US. So when you travel, you meet the people, you get to see the land. We learn a lot from this exercise so that we can do better next time. In the or the natural disaster, then we can use the facilities if they allow us to use. The USNS Mercy will also be visiting Sri Lanka, Vietnam and Japan. Thank you so much for staying with us. We'll put a telephone number on screen right now so that you can call with your questions and the comments for my guest, the accommodating Dr. Sharon Belma George, Medical Officer of Health in the Ministry of Health. And we're talking about the hospital ship USNS Comfort, which will be arriving in St. Lucian Waters on the 23rd of this month and departing on September the 2nd. We already have our first call in line. I do not have my contraption, so you'll have to manage the calls, Mr. Producer. Good evening to you. Go ahead with your contribution, caller. Hello. Good evening, Timothy. Hi, good evening to you, ma'am. Good evening, Dr. Ramadar. Good evening. Good evening. Um, 
regarding the chip coming in, uh, is this a one-off? Is it a one-off, Julia? Um, I'm not sure if we'll be getting the opportunity to continue every year, but for now, we know of this first collaboration. We are hoping it's not a one-off and it continues. But we don't... And it is definitely a walk-in clinic. Yes, it is walk-in. The two clinics which will be located at the National Cultural Center and the OKEU Hospital is a walk-in clinic. So you can come in between 8 and 4 from the 25th of September to the 30th of September. Are you hoping to take advantage of the services? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, um, I mean, it's a little sad to say it, but we know health information is a bit abhorrent when it comes to either you being self-employed, you don't have insurance, you're not able to do this or any other. So to get an opportunity like this, you absolutely should not miss it, and I don't intend to be one of those to miss it. You have any but doubts? But if I come in and I have, I beg your pardon. You have any doubts? Any suspicions? Absolutely not. As okay. a matter of fact, I have been one of those persons on the receive and end of WhatsApp messages and 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 you know, really just houses telling you don't go. They will infect you. They will tag you. They will. I mean, it's, the conspiracy theories are just so wide. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why would these people be going around doing these things and there has not been press about that before now. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you. Bye-bye. Once again, Newsmaker Live with my special guest, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Medical Officer of Health, Ministry of Health, as we continue to focus on the hospital ship USNS Comfort. Good evening to you on the air. Hi, good evening, Timothy, good evening Dr. Uh, Belmar. A uh, question for you, Dr. Belmar. I, I know that um, you said that um, because of logistics and all of that, <clears throat> the um, clinics cannot be held in the South or in any other part of the country other than the North, and that's understandable. But for want of persons getting access to um, the clinics and to... Make, ensuring, ensuring that persons all around St. Lucia um, get, take, get access to the clinics. Would not, it not be feasible to zone the days? So you have one day persons from um, the north and uh, the next day persons from, you know, another part of the... So to ensure that there's a wide distribution of persons accessing the clinic? That's the extent of the contribution? Yes, please. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. It's one of the things that we, we did look at when we heard that we couldn't have a clinic in the South. We were wondering, should we reserve a certain number of days for the mm -hmm. South? But the USNS, they prefer us not to schedule persons because I guess from past experiences, they want to ensure there is no sort of preference to taking persons in, that it's open to the public and persons come in as they wish, that there's no restriction. Because even in their PR, they make it clear there's no restriction. It, it's sort of to prevent ministries from um, allowing their friends or their own people to get priority and others no. So that's one of the reasons they indicated that they wanted free walking without scheduling regions or scheduling groups. But I do take that contribution. I think it, it, it does make a lot of sense to ensure certain areas um, get priority since they fall, they're further away. You have a call? Okay. But why should we uh, be allowing um, people to dictate to us? Um, it seems that the people are dictating on every level. Um, if we are underground and we understand the peculiarities of the situation, mm -hmm. there, shouldn't we be in a position at least to guide them, provide them the necessary guidance? Yes. We have a call. Good evening to you. This is Newsmaker Live. You're on the air. Good evening, Timothy. Good Hi. evening, um, Dr. George. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Dr. Belma George, you mentioned um, in reference to surgery that um, you all have been receiving referrals. How is that? Were, were, doctors, were, were, were doctors chosen? How is, it, how, how is that done? Okay, we've informed all of our physicians, both public and private, of the procedure for patients who need surgical care. So we've been, any patient who needs a surgical procedure or is waiting on a surgical procedure, their physician prepares a, a short referral note 
and takes it, either emails it to us or the patient can bring it into the Ministry of Health to get on the surgery list. And there is still time. We are taking referrals. So then it Friday. means that I it means that this person have an advantage over other other people who may need surgery as well. Um, no, the, because it's a surgery, they need to be scheduled. Remember, the surgeries are being done on the ship. So all of the surgeries are going to be scheduled. The surgeries on the ship, they're different to the walk-in clinics on the ground. The walk-in clinics, first come, first serve, but the surgeries have to be scheduled. So we are sending every referral we get for a surgical procedure, we are forwarding those to the surgical team on the boat. So all the surgeries will be scheduled. Yes, all of the surgeries are going to be scheduled. So persons who know they need a surgical procedure, there is still time to send in those referrals up to Friday this week. Okay. And you could only do it through your medical, through your doctor? For any physician can prepare the referral for you for, for surgery. We need a referral from a physician. Okay. Newsmaker Live, as we continue to take your calls, good evening, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good evening to you, ma'am. Yes, doc. yes, good night, Doc. Good night, Tim. Good evening to you, ma'am. Great initiative, and I'm, all, I'm also in support for this ship coming to St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I have a question for, for Dr. Belma. Um, go George, ahead, go ahead please. Yes, Dr. Yes, Sharon um, Belma-George. For example, I do come to the clinic, the walk-in clinic, and I have a, a headache, and I have a problem with my back. And I mean, there are different problems. Do I have, do I, would I be able to see that the... The doc in the same day, or will I be referred to another day to come back to the to the to the ship? How does that work? Yeah, if I have several problems in in um in a particular day. Yeah, most likely you'll be referred to the specialist that needs to see you for if you have two problems, one will take care of one problem, and then the other specialist will see you. Most likely uh, that will be done in the same day. Ah, okay, great. That's good to know. <laughs> okay. Will you take advantage of the um, services? Oh, for sure, for okay. sure. I'm okay. all in. <laughs> uh, and where are you calling from? From Grand Rosalie. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much, yes, Tim. Good night, Doc. Okay, thank you so much for calling. Once again, Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television with my special guest, Dr. Sharon Belma george Good evening, you on the air? Yes, good night. Uh, the first, for your, first, um, um, first bill caller for this <laughs> evening on health. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Yes, it can help. Two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one, first, dental, concerning the dental care, do you, do they go as far as doing um, dentures, root canals, and um, brushes? Thanks a lot. I'm not sure if they would do braces um, or dentures. We know there's a full dental um, team, but we know dental surgery is going to be done based on the need. But the actual specifics, this one we didn't get the full list for. Okay. So we know they'll be doing, a, there's a, a range of dental services that they will be, but I'm not sure if they'll be doing braces. I made reference earlier on to the fact that we had our first um, male um, caller, primarily because it, the, the females tend to um, take a, yes. a deeper interest in, in matters yes. relating to healthcare. Good evening, Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Yeah, good evening. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Yes, Tim. Okay, the feedback, can you turn on the volume of whatever device that you're listening? Yeah, I'm program? doing that, I'm doing that now. Yeah. Whether it's your internet or whether it's your television set. Yes. Yeah, I'm, take, I'm taking on the volume. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Go Are you okay? Yes. Go ahead for your contribution. Yes. Good evening, Tim. Good evening to you, sir. Yes. I am thinking of um, the elderly. What about the elderly and the disabled people? Mm -hmm. Because remember, there will be elderly, elderly people that might need um, health care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And even disabled people, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me allow um, Dr. Sean Bell, my George, to address this. Yeah, we are aware of certain groups who will be needing specialized care and they'll be taken care of. Some of the homes have already um, called us to ensure that their, 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 their clients are taken care of. So they will be catered for. There are specific groups who, who have indicated an interest. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Hello. Good evening. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Timothy. Good evening, Doc. Good evening good to evening. you. Good evening. 
Would I have you be doing colonoscopies on a on a ship? I didn't get that question. Colonoscopy. Yes, they'll be doing colonoscopies on the ship. Okay then. Thank the, you so much. Okay, yes, all right. Thank welcome. you so much. Okay. Once again, we continue to take your calls on the range of matters pertaining to the visit of the USNS Comfort. Good evening to you. You're on the air. Yes, good evening, Tim. Hi, good, good evening, evening to you, to sir. The doctor. Good evening to, to you, sir. I find out from the doctor, Tim. Uh, those persons doing the walking, if it is uh, determined that they're supposed to have a surgery through that walking, what happens to that? Would they be referred for, uh, for the surgery? Does it extend of your contribution, sir? Yes. Sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, if during the consultation, during the walk-in, it is noted that you need diagnostics, mm -hmm. like you need to do an x-ray, a CT scan, an ultrasound, or you need to do a minor procedure to fix the problem, you will be referred to the ship to get the surgery done. We have another call. Hello, good evening to you. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Good evening to you. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Yeah, you'll talk about... Okay, call up. Do me a favor. Turn uh, down the, vo turn down the volume. Hello, ma'am. Turn down the volume of your television set. I will wait for you. You spoke about mm. the referral, Webbies. right? Mm. How do you, you bring it in and where? The letter before Friday. Okay, if you have a referral letter, you bring it to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. That's on the waterfront, the Sir Stanislaus James Building. This is the building next to NIC. On the first floor, the office of the chief medical officer. You bring that referral into us before Friday or by Friday. Thank you. Okay, Welcome. thank you so much. Yeah. Um, but will that referral come at a cost? So you see a medical doctor, it must come at a cost, does it? If you get it privately, mm -hmm. then the physician will charge you for the medical um, referral. But if you get it through... Um, one of our district medical officers in the mm -hmm. community or mm -hmm. through a public sector physician, mm -hmm. then there would be no cost um, to it. So. Okay, we have a call. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to um, you. I just wanted to find out um, where are they providing the different services so that people will not be going all over the place. For example, um, if you want to have your eyes checked, is it o o um, okay? Okay, you. Okay, you are mm -hmm. the culture center. Thanks yes. a lot. Okay, okay, both the OKEU hospital and the National Cultural Center will be providing the same services. So you could get eye care, dental, all of the clinics that I spoke about at both sites. So you can go to either one, whichever one is closer to you or more accessible. You could go to either one to get the but survey. The, in terms of the surgeries, will be surgeries. Done. All the surgeries will be done on the boat. On the boat. Okay. Yes. Good evening to you, Newsmaker Live. Yeah. Hello. Good night, Doc. Good night, Tim. Good evening Good to night. you, sir. Yeah. Basically, I want to ask you: Are you all doing surgeries on herniated disc in the neck? Oh, can you re can you repeat? Can you repeat? I all do surgeries on herniated disc in the neck. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, it's quite possible. I'm not sure if I saw that on the list, but it's one of the things that if you if you need to get done, we'll send it in um, as a referral. Okay, we have another caller line. Good evening to you. Thanks for calling. This is News Bingo Live. Hello. Hi. Good, good, good evening to you, sir. Good night. Um, I'm just asking a question. Do the ship provide free health care in the U.S.? Because I know in the U.S. health care is not free. Doctors have to get paid. Nurses have to get paid. So I was just wondering. I'm just curious. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> He's just curious. <laughs> What's well, to, as far as I know, all of the services on the ship um, are free. Mm -hmm. So I would think that it's free if it goes to the U.S. as well. Okay. Let's... I, uh, in a moment, I'll ask you to walk us through the procedure. What happens in terms? Because you're okay. making reference to um, accessing certain services yes. at the OKEU as well as the, um, the cultural, cultural center. center. So it's yes. very important for us to address this issue. No problem. Good evening, Newsmaker Live on the air. Okay, we lost that call. Once again, my guest this evening is the medical officer uh, in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sharon Belma George. We're taking your questions on the planned visit to St. Lucia of the hospital ship USNS Comfort, and that is from the 23rd of October, of September, sorry. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, good evening. Hi, good evening to you, ma'am. Yes, I would like to know if there is any knee replacement 
for knee replacement. Knee replacement okay. surgery. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's one of those that we would submit as a referral and see, you know, the extent of which they would do. Okay. I am not sure if I saw it on the list because okay. they said they sent a list, but they mm -hmm. said there are other procedures that they can also do. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they do knee replacement. Okay. All right. Good Hello? evening. Hi. Good evening to you, ma'am. You're on the air. Yes. Okay. Hi, Tim. Good night. Hi, good I have a to question to Dr. Berma. Go ahead, please. Good night. Uh, good night, Dr. Berma. How does one make an appointment for uh, uh, um, MRI or a scan? Um, MRI services are not available on the ship, but CT scan services are. What I would oh. need is the diagnostic form which we have yeah. within the sector. I just need it filled out and sent to our office before Friday. Okay. Once you have um, the request MRI's form, you'll be put on the list. But MRI is not available not on the ship. Okay, no. then. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you so much for calling, ma'am. As we await another call for my guest on this evening's broadcast. And people are taking a deep interest in, in health care. Um, that's because of the cost involved. And that's mm -hmm. because of the sometimes non-availability of some services. We have a call. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Good evening to you, caller. Tell me what, what must I do? Beg pardon, can I, you repeat? I follow the program late. Mm -hmm. So tell me what must I do before I go to the boat. Okay. I have two teeth to fill and two to remove. Also, what must I do? Okay. Yeah, then 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 then. Then. Okay. Okay. You want to listen? You want to hold on the line or you want to listen on your television set? Tell me. Will you listen on your television set? Or you want to listen over the phone? I'm listening on my television set. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, dental ahead. services mm -hmm. will prov be provided at the walk-in clinics, mm -hmm. which is the OKEU Hospital and the National Cultural Center. So you come in between the 25th to the 30th of September from 8 to 4 to access dental care to, to, to manage your condition. Okay, so walk-in clinics from what time? From 8 to 4. 8 to 4. And they may extend till 5 based mm -hmm. on the numbers. But and try to come by 4 o'clock. And the days? From the 25th to the 30th of September. Okay, so the 25th to the, to the 30th, 30th of, of September. September. That is particularly, especially for my last caller. Yes. So you have walk-in clinics, 8 to 4 p.m., 25th to the 30th. And that's the, the OKEU Hospital. And the National, and the Cultural, National Cultural, Cultural Center. Center. Good evening. News Make Alive. You're on the air. Hey, good night, Tim. Good, good, night, good, good, good evening to you. Good um, evening to you. I'm a disability. Um, I live alone, and um, I understood that you're going to have some clinic at the comprehensive school. Is that so, or at the other place you mentioned? And what are the days um, that we can work in that clinic? So, what is your condition? I, I left a leg, and I, okay. I lost a left eye. Okay. All right. So I'm disabled, and I live alone. I'm from the Lesland area. Okay, all right. So I want to know, somebody mm -hmm. said that they're going to have a clinic at the comprehensive school. Is that so? No, we will not be using the comprehensive school. When the team came down, they did review the comprehensive school as a possible site. Okay. But because of the traffic and the logistics in that area, and school is open, um, we advise against the use of, of the school. Okay. So, so the school is not a site. The two sites are the OKEU Hospital and the National Cultural Center. Okay. So most likely I might have to get an ambulance or a taxi to come up. In, your, in that area? Where, you, okay. where, where do you I live, have, sir? I don't have transport and I, I'm in a wheelchair. Where do you live? I live in Leslie Land. And I'm, a, I'm a second shot in and I'm also um, a retiree. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 66 years old, so I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. And I would need to get there to check on my eye because I lost my left eye. Okay. Okay, understood. Yes. Yeah, so you have, um, you have any family members that. that can take you? Say what? Do you have family members that can take you to no, the I clinic? No, I live alone. Okay. Okay. So no. I might have to depend on my neighbor. Maybe Tim can help me <laughs> to <laughs> drop it there. Perhaps Tim will pick you up. What's, what's your number, sir? My number is four five six zero two five zero. Four five six zero two five zero, and my zero, name is David two. Mitchell. Okay. All right, and, sir. And what do we we thinking of, um, Mr. Tim? Big man. What day is the clinic? The clinic is uh, the twenty fifth to the thirtieth. Okay. Eight o'clock in the morning to four in the afternoon. Okay, so so can 
I leave everything in your hands in terms of getting there? I, I, I will call you, sir. I will give you a call, for thank sure. Thank you very much, Tim. I really okay. appreciate it. I'm talking, Dr. George. <laughs> All right. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. You're very welcome. So which day, which, day, which day will be good for you? Which day will be good for you? For what now? Which day will be good for you? 25th to the 30th? Uh, 25th is the first day, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. First day will be fine. Okay, the 25th. Now, uh, 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 do you have a point on Sunday as well? Yes, there's a Saturday and Sunday within those dates. Okay, okay well, I'll just rather go to Sunday then. The Sunday? Yeah, it would be very convenient for a lot of people. Okay, sir. Okay. All right, we'll and and it's a whole day as well, right? Big man? Whole day as well on the Sunday? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you so much. I All appreciate right. your, your kind cooperation. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. All mm -hmm. right. Once again, this is Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television. We continue to take your calls for my guest. Good evening to you on the air. Hello? The one thing. After, hello? Hi, good evening to you. After all that surgery and thing is done, and the ship leave, what, what's next for, for the patient? Follow-up. Yes. Meaning follow-up. Yeah, okay. All right, thanks that's, a lot. that's a very important mm -hmm. question and that's yeah. one of the things that we insisted on. So all the patients will be given referrals to some patients through the public sector and as usual persons have a choice if they do they follow up publicly or with their usual private physician. But all patients will be given a referral and referred for follow-up care. Okay. Got another call. Good evening, you're on the air. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Um, it never ceases to amaze me that um, I was reading the papers today, the Trinidad papers, and uh, the ship just completed its mission there, in 5,000 patients. And we have these negative vibes coming about from, about the ship. There were two audio videos um, which said say that uh, it is a cruise ship. Now, from the time I heard it as a cruise ship, I dismissed it one time. From the onset, I knew that was none. The thing is, a military ship, and it's a good cruise ship. Now, um, this is maliciousness. It's just like um, there was some news, I think it was last evening, where the permanent secretary had, um, in the Ministry of Health, had to come and um, straighten out things in terms of people lying on the floor at this. Why are our, why are our, our people so white? Why are our people so... It is very, very sad. Ship just completed in Trinidad, I think today, 5,000 people were killed. And yet, we get in this thing, and it's negative, and, and they're bashing the professionals as well. I had a talk show host saying to the, the, the representative of the U.S. Embassy, that the ministry did not do a good job in the administration. How can you do that to your people? These are professional people. I am sure that the, 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 um, the embassy must have had discussion. Dr. Belma, etc., Dr. Uh, Mustadine, Frederick, at the ministry, so that they can go out there and inform the public as to what is what and what to expect from the ship. Why are we doing that? Then Tim, you had another guy there who said he's rather one day of Dorian than three years of the Prime Minister. Yeah, we, we're, talking, we're talking about the USNS conference. We're not going no, there. No, but, Tim, yeah. but and, and, and another thing, uh, Dr. Belma, um, <clears throat> what did, I, I know you are the, what's your position? Medical Officer of Health. Okay. But, Dr. Belma, we have a lot of rats running around. A lot, a lot of rats. Uh, they have got, they have, at one time, they were gone, but now you should see that, Dr. Belma. I don't know if you could take that as a result of the ministry. Tons of rats running around. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for calling, sir. Your response? Um, I note the caller's concerns. Um, we, we are aware that there is... We note the rodenticide and our environmental health um, unit continues to work to, to deal with the, the rat situation. But I also urge the public in terms of personal responsibility on keeping our surroundings and our environment clean as well. Um, that if each of us play um, our part in terms of garbage disposal and in terms of our communities, 
we can play a significant role. It's not just about killing rats, but dealing with the process as to dealing with why we have so many rats. We have a call. Good evening to you, News Michael Ivey on the air. Yeah, good evening, Jim. Good evening, and good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Yes, so we're on a call concerning about the um, disabled and the elderly, but you spoke about um, the groups, like if, if, if they're in a group or a group would register or group. I'm thinking of what about the people who are living alone, disabled people who are living alone, the elderly people would come there with the cousin, would they have priority because they're elderly, the young people are, are more agile than them, they would be able to move and you know, but I think the elderly people, you all should, you all should put things in place and the disabled, that when they come there and they're not in groups, they come there with somebody to just help them to see the doctor, I think they should have priority to see the doctor. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. And one other thing, one other yeah. thing, um, uh, one other question I want to ask. Um, concerning um, dental, is it only extraction or they will be having feelings also? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. It's not just extraction. There'll be dental cleaning, there'll be fillings, and there'll be a range of dental surgeries as well, um, and maxillofacial surgeries as well. Good evening. News Michael Ivey on the air. Yes, hi, good evening. I'm just going to find out if there are going to be endoscopies done. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, there will be laparoscopy, endoscopy, colonoscopy done on the ship as well. Good evening, Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Yes, good evening, Jim. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Let me ask a, a, a question um, in relation to the follow-up. Already, Doc, you know that there is a problem with space at Victoria. Now, granted, you may find a number of people, you know, going for surgery. Assuming that they must be in a hospital setting, what is in place to accommodate those people at Victoria, let us say, for instance? Because, you know, the majority of these people might be poor people and they might not be able to afford um, Tapio and Hoya. What is in place for Victoria to accommodate people who need to be in a hospital setting? Okay. Thank you so much for calling. Yes. That's sir. an important mm -hmm. question. That is why the ship will be doing minor surgical procedures. There's admitting capacity on the ship. So the sh and that is why they're going to be scheduling the surgery. So surgery, surgical procedures that need at least a six-day admission period will be done first. And those patients will be admitted on the ship. So conditions that are just day cases and don't need admissions, those will be done last. The ship, they will not be doing surgeries that need follow-up um, admissions unless, you know, somebody needs extra. And those, because we have our surgical team from Victoria Hospital working alongside them, it will be a lot easier. But we do not anticipate that the persons who do surgery on the ship will need further admission. That is why they're not doing some of the major surgeries that we may have wanted because it would have been good. They can do major surgeries, but they will not be doing it because of the necessity for further admission, which we cannot guarantee. Another caller nine. Good evening to you. Thanks for holding on. You're now on the air. Bell. Hello. Good evening to you, caller. Um, good evening. What, what I want to ask, I want to ask, what, why are you making the appointment to come and see the doctor on the boat? Okay. Um, do you know how to make the appointment to see? The, the boat is only for diagnostics and for surgery. So if you need to do a CT scan or an ultrasound, we need a request for... What I want is an x-ray I want to do, Dr. Belma. That's the lady from Bradford, the flower lady that's talking to you there. <laughs> we need a request from, um, for you. I guess my love of flowers has to come out somehow. <laughs> <and> plant. <laughs> Okay, my lady, uh, I just need a request from, from you indicating um, that you need to do an x-ray and take it to us before Friday. So where have to come to see you before Friday? To the Ministry of Health on the first floor. That's the ministry, the building next to the NIC. On the waterfront. On the waterfront. Okay, the, before Friday, doctor? Yes, please. Okay. So Thank in fact, you very that is, much. In fact, in fact, that's tomorrow. Okay, thank you. You're okay. welcome. Okay. Yeah. Once again, we continue to take your calls. This is Newsmaker Live. We have another call online. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Good evening to you, ma'am. Good Hello. evening. You're Hi. on the air. Good evening. Um, Dr. Belma. Good evening. You said they're doing CT scans. Do they do chest scans also? 
see yeah, CT of any part of the body they do. Thank you very much. And I have to get a referral, right? Um, the diagnostic form, just get it filled out and take it to us by Friday. And where do, we, where do I get the form? All the healthcare professionals have the form for diagnostics. In any of our wellness centers, you can go in and have one of the doctors fill it out for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, dear. Thank you so much for calling. We await another call at 13 minutes before 10 o'clock. You are watching Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. Once again with my guest, the Medical Office of Health in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sharon Belma george um, I think we have another call in line. Good evening to you. You're on the air. Yes, Dr. Belma, I have a question for you, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my doctor gave me a paper to do a colonoscopy. Would that be a referral? Would that be a referral? Yes. The for... paper she wrote in her office? Yes, you can bring that in to us. Uh, okay, I was just wondering... All right. Thank Thanks, you. Yes. Thank you so much for calling. And we have sufficient time to take a lot of calls. So um, those calls are coming in, and the people are making their contribution very briefly. So we appreciate that. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. Good evening. Good evening, I to you, sir. I just want to find out if you all do um diagnose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but the ship. Can you can you repeat the question? <laughs> Hello? Yes, we do look. Go ahead, please. Uh, Carla, I wanted to know whether they do diagnostic on the ship. Yes, okay. they do diagnostic tests on the ship, CT scans, x-rays, ultrasounds, echocardiograms, blood, stool, urine testing. Okay. So he just needs to get the form and bring it in. And bring it in to tomorrow? us by Friday. This Friday this week? Yes, Friday this week. Okay. All right. So get that information to so him. Any health center? You, you, can get the, you can get one of the physicians at the wellness centers to fill out the form for you. All right. And is he doing okay there? You're sneezing. Is he doing okay? Yes, he's better now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for calling. Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. Once again, my guest, Dr. Sharon Belma George, as we continue to take your calls with regard to how you can access the services of the USNS Comfort. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, good evening to you. Um, Dr. Belma. Good evening. Yes, I, I, I went to your office some time ago. They told me you were on holidays. And they, they took my, my name and my, all my information for, for, to, see, to go on the boat. Yes. And they promised to call me back, and they never called me back. We have all of the referrals that were sent in in my absence. We have all of them for referral to the ship's staff. So once you sent it in, it's going to be referred. No, they, they, they just took my number, my telephone number, my name, but they never called me back to tell me anything. They never followed when, up with that. When we get the schedule for patients, we will call persons to let them know the date and the time of their procedure. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank you so much for calling, sir. Newsmaker Live on DBS Television, where we continue to take your calls. We have at least 10 minutes left on the program. Good evening. You're on the air? Yeah, good evening. Good evening, good evening Dr. Good evening. Good evening. Sir. Yeah, I would like to find out would they be doing any prostate tests? Prostate. Anyone? Prostate. Yes. Prostate. Yes, they will be doing reviews of the prostate. Um, depending on what the issue is, they may be doing ultrasounds, colonoscopies, and also surgeries on the prostate as needed. Okay, what would that be at? Um, so have you been diagnosed with a condition or you just want a checkup? I just want to check up, yeah. Okay, so you would need to access one of the two walk-in clinics, either at the National Cultural Center or the OKEU Hospital. And they'll do a full review um, for you there and decide what is needed moving forward. Okay, thank you very much. And You're welcome. And 8 o'clock and 4 in the afternoon. Good night, thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Um, can anyone basically could go to any of the clinics? Any one of the two okay. clinics, yes. 
Good evening, News Maker Live, you're on the air. Good night to me. Hi. Good night to you, sir. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to get a referral to get the coronoscopy done, or could I go to one of the, the clinics and they will give me a referral there? If you know, if you're already pending to do a colonoscopy, I would suggest you bring in the diagnostic form from now to get yourself scheduled. However, if you go to the walk-in clinic and they note you need to get one done, they can then schedule you to get it done on the ship. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, then. Thank you, Doc. All you're right. welcome. Thank you so much for calling. As we await another call for my special guest. Good evening. Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Um, good evening. Hi, Hello. good evening to you, caller. Good evening, Timothy. Good evening. I'm, ca I'm calling to find out whether um, mammograms will be done on the ship. Yes, they also do mammograms on the ship. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. Thank you so much. Um, earlier, I was asking the question, why should we allow them to dictate to us? Remember the question I, I did pose to you um, in terms of, for example, somebody was talking about zoning, you know, allowing special yes. days. Anyway, we have a call. Good evening. News being alive, you're on the air. Good evening, Tim. Hi, good evening to you, caller. Okay, I'm not a doctor, but is there any employment on the ship? Um, no. As far as I know, there is no employment. Our staff or our medical officers will be working alongside the team is on a voluntary um, basis because remember all of the services they provided it's free of charge okay i thought i was gonna be able to make some money things are hard um, i understand but this may not be the best route but why would you want to work on the ship to do what just to make some money things are hard <laughs> okay all right Thank you so Thank much you. for calling, sir. Appreciate your contribution. As we await another call, this is Newsmaker Live on DBS Television. The caller nine. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Good evening to you, caller. Yes. Would angiograms be done on the boat? No. Angiograms will not be done on the boat. We we've asked. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What's an angiogram? It's a test that they use for the blood vessels okay. to to review the blood vessels. I call. Good evening, Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Hello, good evening to you, caller. Uh, good evening. I'd good like evening. to know if you all do ultrasound. Yes, we'll be doing ultrasounds. Um, mammogram, ultrasound? Yes, we'll be doing mammograms as well. Thank you. Thank you if so you much. Have, uh, mm -hmm. one more. Go ahead, go ahead. One more thing. If you have to do blood tests, you have a paper from the doctor for the blood test. Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, people are really appreciating um, the services that will be provided by this hospital ship. Good evening, you're on the air? Yes, good night. Um, Hi, good evening. Will trans translation services be provided for persons who speak Creole only? Or translation services? What do you say? Will translation services be provided to people who can only speak Creole? Yes, that is why we have quite a few of our... Well, that's one of the reasons why we have um, our local teams working alongside the U.S. so that persons who speak only Creole, there's no communication issues. Good evening. You're on the air? Hello, good night. How Hi. are you? I'm okay, ma'am. How about you? Fine, thank you. Okay. Um, wonderful program, and it's good to know that we're getting such help. I'm wondering... If I have nasal polyps, because I'm scheduled to have them removed, if I have nasal polyps, would such procedures be done on the ship? Yes. Well, of nasal polyps. Yes, those can be removed on the ship. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, thank, thank you, you so welcome. much for coming. And we have uh, four minutes left on the program. Let's see how many calls we can get um, before we conclude. Good evening. You on the air? Hello, good evening to you, Paula. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening to you. to find out whether or not they'll be doing MRIs? No, the ship will not be doing MRIs. Okay, I have a referral from a local doctor, but I have it from last year. Would that still be considered? Can I come in with it? For an MRI? MRI? Not for an MRI, for another... Um, yes, you can bring it in. Yes, I have a herniated disc in my back. Would that be... Um, one of the minor surgeries. 
we can look at it and see because there's an orthopedic team there, so we can we can send it in to see if they can prov um, provide the the surgical procedure, the intervention. Thank you, Dr. Bernard. You're welcome. Thank you so much for calling them. Let's see if we can squeeze in at least uh, three more calls on uh, the program, and then we'll get a final comment from my guest. Good evening. Hello. Good evening to you, caller. Hello. Tim. Hi, good evening to you, sir. Yeah, good night. Good night to you. Um, I have a problem with my eye, right? So I wonder if I can just walk in or what I should I do? Okay. You can just walk into one of our two clinics, either at the OKEU Hospital or the National Cultural Center to get them to review your eye. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so that's between 8 o'clock in the morning and 4 in the afternoon, between the 25th and the 30th of this month. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you so much for calling. Let's take two more calls on the program. I think we've gotten at least about 40 calls already. <laughs> Good evening, Ms. Nicolai, you're on the air. Hello, yeah, Tim. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right. How are you? I'm great. I'm you're, great. You're back on island? No, not as yet, Tim. <laughs> you, you're watching us from from the States? Yeah, I'm watching you on the net. On Facebook. Okay. Go ahead, please, with your contribution. Yes. Yeah, Tim. Um, what I was saying is, if we could get the, the, the engineers on board the vessel, maybe have a word with the captain to look at some of our equipment that is faulty for now, you know, if they could give us a little support. I think the, 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 the engineers, the captain and them, they would be grateful to, to give that kind of assistance. And um, the, the last thing, Tim, I want to be, because after we deal with 500 patients a day, yeah, Tim, we want to make sure that we have somewhere that those patients can go to after the vessel leaves St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, oh, yeah, that's my contribution. When, when, are, you, you very good when are you returning to St. Lucia? Uh, very soon. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll see. Uh, yeah, okay, buddy. Okay, take care. Yeah, so, like I indicated earlier, the patient should be referred for follow-up. Um, I'm not sure about the engineers. I didn't engineers for where? To, to, to service some uh, equipment at the hospitals and so on. Oh, okay. Um, that was not part yeah. of the plan. But okay. We can always ask. Yes. <laughs> okay, we lost that call, but continue to call us. We'll take two more calls on the program. Once again, this is Newsbeak Live with my special guest. We're focusing on the USNS Comfort. Good evening to you, on the air. Good evening. Good evening to you. Yes, um, Timothy and Doc. Um, will they be doing any keloid removal? Like, for example, somebody yes. may have like a keloid growing on the air. Yes, they will be removing those. Okay, and what's the procedure for that one? I just need a referral from a physician for you, and we'll schedule you in to get it done. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And we'll take a final call on the broadcast once again for my special guest. Let's take that final call. Good evening to you, our final call. Hi, good evening. Good evening to you. Dental? Do you just walk in? For dental? Yes, you just walk in for dental. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great show. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Thank You're you so welcome. much. Yes. Final comments. Walk <laughs> us through the process. So the ship arrives on the 23rd. What happens yes. on the 23rd when it arrives? Okay. I can... Let me just look at my... The, the, the full schedule. Because it arrives on the 23rd. It does not start to commence operation not until the Yes, 23rd. because they'll be, they'll be doing the necessary setup mm -hmm. um, on the 23rd. It takes them two days to set up all of the equipment from the ship um, on the ground. Right. And then services will be provided from the 25th to the 30th right. to, to persons. There are a number of activities um, scheduled during that, during that period. A lot of the first two days, there'll be an opening ceremony with all the officials in the beginning. Right. Um, a lot of logistics and technical setup in the first two days. Um, as I said, the, the opening ceremony will be the Wednesday morning. Patients will be seen at the two sites, like I indicated, and surgeries will be 
will also be happening. Um, there'll also be a day for the press. Yeah. There'll be a lot of international press okay. here as well, and for the local press to talk, to ask questions, and to really the see. The international press will be um, coming via the cruise ship. Uh, via the no, no, they'll ship. be no, they'll be coming through their own means. Okay, from the U.S. From the U.S. Okay. Yes. Um, the, the fourth day, there's a there's a 26th, will be the media day, where the media will be both local and international to to actually see what what happens on the on the ship. Um, our local medical practitioners will also get an opportunity to tour the ship. I'm also looking forward to a tour of the ship. I've never seen a ship hospital okay. of that yeah, magnitude yeah. of those services. So quite a few of our officers are, are interested in, in, in that visit. Um, the visit continues. There will also be some local activities. They'll be doing support to certain groups and certain communities as well, as well as providing support to our public health primary care teams during that that period. Um, the clinics continue. The last two days will be wrap-up and also closing ceremony. Okay. So that's basically um, what happens. Okay. And okay. again, what happens at the um, at e OKEU and also the Cultural Center? OKEU and Cultural Center will be our walk-in clinics from the 25th to the 30th of September from 8 to 4. Um, persons who require care or who need care can feel free to come in from eye care to dental to general checkups to reviews. They can come in to, to be seen by the, the U.S. professionals on that day. Um, persons who require diagnostic care or surgeries, those will be done on the ship, which will be both at Point Seraphine. But they require a referral. They require a referral for okay. that. And that referral, they take it to the Ministry, to of, the Health Ministry of Health or tomorrow and Friday. Right, mm -hmm. yes. But or, we've, yes. You know. Or the physicians can also email to us as well because mm -hmm. that information has been shared with both the public and the private healthcare workers. Now, what kind of um, entertainment will be provided to the health personnel? Will you all be taking them to grocery? <laughs> will you be taking them to the sulfur springs, to the volcano? What will be them? Um, what I'm kind not of sure compensation? That... You can't pay the people, right? <laughs> you have about I'm this? not sure if there's time, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what we do. Final comments yes. from you? Um, I just want to, first of all, acknowledge and thank the, the team, the coordinating team from External Affairs and also from the U.S. for making this opportunity available to our people. Uh, my passion is always... Um, our persons who lack access or can't afford care. So I, I have a passion for persons who need care and it's not always accessible. So um, I think it's a great opportunity and I encourage persons, like we're saying, it's voluntary. Any, pers any person who's skeptical or doesn't feel comfortable, it's okay. You access care you normally do. But for other persons, I encourage you to take advantage. I see it as an opportunity for our people. Dr. Sharon Belma George, Medical Officer of the uh, of Health in the Ministry of Health, thank you so much for being my guest Thanks. on this evening's News Make Alive. Thank you. And to you, thank you so much for watching the broadcast. Thank you for your many calls. Thank you so much for watching via Facebook. And I was hoping that we'll be taking advantage of the services being provided by the USNS Comfort. And they'll be arriving in St. Lucia on the 23rd of this month and commencing their services to members of the public two days later. That's the 25th until October the 2nd. If it's Wednesday, it's News Make a Lifetime. Now for the clip that peaked. <laughs> and as a broadcast, please join me tomorrow afternoon between 12.30 and 2 o'clock. That's on Real FM 91.3 North and 91.5 South for Newspin. Good night and see you next time.